one of the most popular pieces in the classical guitar repertoire and often used as an encore piece, probably because um, general audiences, the general public actually know this piece and um, are familiar with it. So it's a very popular piece in that regard and played a lot um, for sure. Um, you can get the free sheet music off my website. There's a link under the video for that. Um, so just go grab the PDF. It's, there's no sign up or anything required. You just go grab the score. Sheet music has all of my fingerings and, on it and has string indications and positions. So that should be really helpful. Um, and also if you need it, there's a tab version. Um, of course, I recommend using the notation version, but if you need the tab, it's there. Um, one thing about the score is that I've simplified the notation just slightly to make it clean and easy to understand, but just make sure that you're sustaining the bass notes through the harmonies in this piece. So I'm going to talk about four main ways to practice this piece. We're not going to walk through the whole piece, but I'll give you four ways and I'll show you the application of those four ways. The first way is about playing the melody on its own and identifying the melody. The second way is about learning the chord shapes in your left hand in a relaxed and precise way. The third thing we're going to talk about is playing with the metronome and, and practicing slowly to build up finger independence and dexterity. And finally, we're going to talk about breaking down the difficult parts of the piece, playing it slowly and in time at first, and adding rubato later. I'm going to go over how to practice this piece and some useful tips for this piece, but I might not do a whole run through of the entire piece with you because for, for one thing, when you go to upper level repertoire, um, if you're not at the level to assimilate the music on your own a little bit, um, you should be cautious of taking on this piece. Um, it is an advanced piece. It's not crazy. There's nothing too crazy in it, but I mean, it's advanced and, and it is difficult. Um, if you haven't played tremolo pieces before, I would highly recommend you start with one of the easier tremolo pieces out there. Um, the Venia's piece, um, um, it's much shorter. Um, there's some shorter Barrios pieces, actually. Not his ultimate tremolo, but um, like the Thread Spinner, for example, Song of the Thread Spinner. Um, there's, there's a number of, of easier tremolo pieces in educational books as well. And you might want to tackle those before taking on like the iconic tremolo piece. So a couple of things. Let's first just tackle a misconception about tremolo and what tremolo is. We know, you all know how it's kind of done. It's like a rapid movement of thumb, A, M, I, usually. And that rapid movement um, sounds really impressive, but there's, there's much more to much more to it than that. It's not about being virtuosic or impressive. It's about presenting a melody. And one of the biggest mis misconceptions in tremolo pieces is that the melody is in the bass line. Even advanced guitarists, I've had advanced guitarists take lessons from me and they, they don't know which part is the melody, the bass line or the upper line. Well, it's the upper line. The point of tremolo is to create an illusion of continuous sustain in the upper voice. Continuous sustain like a violinist would make, right? Or a singer or something. Um, by repeating those notes, we're creating a continuous sustain that is the melody. And it's really easy to figure that out. If we play the top voice of this music, and we just play it in quarter notes, So that's very clear to the melody. The bass line it's interesting. It has um, melodic movement in it, and it is interesting, but it, what it really mostly does is outlines the harmony of the piece. Um, so when you're thinking about tremolo, you have to be focused on the upper repeated notes making sure that you think of that as the melody. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions of this piece. Um, same goes for other tremolo pieces like the Barrios. Um, it's that upper line that is the melody. The bass line, it's, 
it's fun and it's interesting, but it's it's very repetitive and really um, more like arpeggios than a melody. So with that in mind, um, that should guide you through the whole piece. So the first thing you should do when practicing this piece is play the melody on its own. And in this one, you have to get rid of a lot of those tremolo notes in order to do that. But the piece is in three, four. One, two, three. So I hope that's very, very clear. Okay, second way to practice the piece would probably be to get a handle on the chord shapes. Um, your, your left hand is going to have to navigate all these shapes, so you probably want to zero in on what the chord shapes are and kind of memorize them. You can do that by combining the upper and lower voice in eighth note, um, in an eighth note beat. One. through the whole piece like that will allow you to really work on the left hand shapes in a nice clean fashion without worrying about the tremolo aspect. Um, tremolo is such a difficult technique that um, once we start turning this hand on it, there's a tendency for the left hand to get really tense and not be paying um, close attention to um, detail because our right hand is so busy. So really focus on just the left hand shapes. So you, first you learn the melody on its own, second you um, learn the left hand chord shapes. Now the third thing that you should do is before adding any romantic rubato, rubato again is that push and pull of rhythm, um, before you add any rubato to this piece, you should probably get the metronome out and just start evening out your tremolo. Um, and I say that partly, um, I mean, you have to practice your, your technique of tremolo separately from this piece. You can't just use this piece to practice your tremolo. You have to be building up your the foundation of your technique and the foundation of your tremolo through technical exercises. Um, that's a really great way in problem solvers. There's lots of books out there that can, that address that, um, such as Pumping Nylon and uh, um, Isanola's book, for example. Lots of great tremolo exercises. Um, getting a handle on that technique, very important. But in terms of this piece, before adding rubato, and I say this in all my videos, so you're probably sick of me saying it, but practice the piece without rubato until you can actually um, play the piece very evenly. And with tremolo pieces, that's incredibly useful because it'll keep your, your technique in order. Um, this isn't a tremolo lesson, right? Um, tremolo is a technique that has to be mastered and um, there's other videos out there by me as well um, on tremolo and how to improve your tremolo. But I'll just say this is that when you're practicing the tremolo in this piece, I'd recommend putting the metronome on to different rhythmic values and then working your way up. So for example, you could start with a 16th note value. So that would put the accent on the thumb and the M finger. Oh, let me slow it down. By putting it in the middle, um, it kind of gives you a more even adjustment for your tremolo because there's, even if you put it to the quarter note, you still might rush your tremolo a little bit. Your thumb will be accurate, but 
you should try to even out on a smaller division first. to the quarter note, or so to the eighth note, apologies. And, and of course you can keep on increasing your tempo until you're getting a little bit faster, but don't practice it at full speed. Tremolo is too easy to practice fast and sloppy, right? Like to just dive into it and try to play it like this. You'll find it easier to play fast, but that doesn't mean that that's how you should practice. You should be practicing very slowly and very evenly, giving all of your fingers lots of control over tempo. Um, playing it fast um, isn't going to help you build your technique. It's just like, and if you find it easier to play fast, that means you have a weakness in your slower tremolo and you have to even out that weakness because as you get going faster and faster, um, you're, you know, the sloppy tremolo is very common. Um, fatigue is very common in the arm, like getting really hot, possibly getting injured um, by repetitive movements. It's very repetitive, so you have to be very careful. So. It's a little bit of a warning, but also just a, a mention of, of how you should definitely be practicing very slow. Make it sound beautiful slowly before you even try to go fast. A very common question in this piece is how to play those triplets. Now, so in bar 11, there's this triplet figure, right? Think of the triplet in terms of 16th notes. So here's the metronome at 100, and I'm pretending this is the 16th note, so that's the thumb and the M finger. Again. Let me slow it down even more. Once you have that rhythm with the metronome, just kind of memorize it, right? And then as you speed it up, just don't lose it. Oops. And as I said before, get used to playing it with the metronome without rubato. And then when you add rubato later, it'll actually be easier because you can kind of approach it with a little bit of, of rubato, right? So, um, making sure that you practice it right in time and then you can add expressive rubato later to make it easier, but don't make it easy at first, right? Because you have to practice it. You have to make sure your technique is in order in order to play this music, right? Let's break down the ways that I talked about practicing this piece. Number one, reduce the melody to a quarter note and just play the melody on its own so that you learn how you're going to shape the phrasing, how you're going to play this piece with the prominent melody. Then add the harmony of the piece in eighth notes so that you learn the left hand shapes in a nice relaxed and precise fashion. Then third, start playing the piece with the metronome on just to make sure that you're nice and even. Start with small divisions on the metronome and then grow to larger divisions to learn how to stream through the notes. Practice slowly so that you, you um, aren't fooling yourself as to how good you really are at tremolo. Um, practicing slowly will improve your dexterity and your finger independence, and you need that. 
And then any tricky spots, such as those triplets, break it down, um, play it with the metronome, then memorize the rhythm, and then as the final last step, add rubato to make it easier, but not doing that beforehand. And the rest of the piece uses only those same things. Um, it's, it's exactly the same throughout the whole piece. Um, all 30 second notes um, with a couple of those little triplet figures every once in a while at cadences and things like that. Um, and then you just have to learn the shapes. And I think between the sheet music with all my fingering and notation on it, um, and if you need the tablature, you can get the tablature, but I'd recommend that you, you read the notation. But um, then you have everything you need and you just follow that advice and I think you'll, you'll be able to accomplish the piece in a musical way and also improve your technique along the way.